hope you are fine and doing well i discussed about the epidemiological research studies in previous sessions and uh, now i am going to discuss about the factors that can affect the study outcomes these factors can lead the study outcomes into the wrong direction and mislead the researcher these may be by chance which is called random error or bias or confounding which may produce misleading results observational studies are more susceptible to the effect of chance bias and confounding so appropriate steps must be taken at both the design and analysis so the effect could be minimized due to the effect of these factors study results cannot be generalized so it's necessary to take the measures to prevent these factors so mainly these factors are of three types which are bias confounding and effect modifiers bias is any systematic error that results in an incorrect estimate of the association between an exposure and the disease it is usually introduced by the researcher due to non standardized measuring techniques and bias can pull an association either towards or away from the null that is it can change the direction of the results completely when we see the types of the bias then there are more than 50 types of bias which are identified in epidemiological studies but for simplicity they are broadly grouped into two categories selection bias and information bias let's discuss them one by one selection bias occurs when the inclusion of subjects in a study depends in some way on the outcome of interest it occurs mainly in case control studies and retrospective cohort studies but in prospective cohort study selection bias not occur because outcome of interest has not yet occurred selection bias can occur due to improper means of source of selection of the study subjects example of selection bias is a study conducted to see the association between oral contraceptive and thromboembolism there was a concern in this study was that as physicians were already aware of the possible relationship between oral contraceptive and thromboembolism proportion of women that had been hospitalized for evaluation of thromboembolism was all current measures of oral contraceptive so any increased frequency of thromboembolism in oral contraceptive users could be in part due to the fact that hospitalization and the determination of the diagnosis were both influenced by a history of oral contraceptive use another mean of selection bias could be due to inappropriate source of selection for example cases selected from the hospitals and controls from the household surveys in this case it is possible that a number of demographic and lifestyle variables could be different among the cases and controls which can lead to non comparability between groups and incorrect results with respect to association between exposures and outcomes in a clinical trial a selection bias can occur if there is no randomization suppose that the principal investigator is taking a decision as to which patient are going to be included in the standard drug group and which patient is going to be included in the new drug group if the principal investigator is allowed to do so he might include all the healthy persons in the new drug group and all patients who are sick in the standard drug group in this way he can show better outcomes among the new drug group compared to the standard treatment group and the present results will not be the true results
The process of randomization ensures that selection bias cannot take place by ensuring that the principal investigator and his team members are not even close to where the randomization process is taking place. Observation or information bias. Observation or information bias is any systematic error in the measurement of information on exposure or outcome. It is further classified into different categories on the basis of source of non comparability into recall bias, interviewer bias, loss to follow up bias, and misclassification bias. Recall bias occurs when individuals with previous adverse health outcomes remember and report their previous exposure differently or with different degree of completeness and accuracy than those who are unexposed. It can lead to an over or underestimate of the association between exposure and disease, depending on whether the cases recall their exposure to a greater or lesser extent than the controls. For example, in a case control study, mothers whose recent pregnancies had ended in fetal death and report their exposure experience differently than a matched group of mothers whose pregnancy had ended normally. That is, cases may have a better recall on past exposure than controls. Interviewer bias it refers to any systematic difference in the recording or interpretation of information by interviewer from study participants and can affect every type of epidemiological study. Loss to follow up It is a major concern in a cohort or any perspective study. When persons lost to follow up differ from those who remain in the study with respect to both the exposure and the outcome, any observed association will be biased. Even very small loss to follow up can be a potential for bias as long as such loss is related to both exposure and disease. Misclassification bias It occurs when the sensitivity or specificity of the procedure or questionnaire that is a study tool to detect exposure or outcome is not perfect. That is, disease subjects can be classified as non-diseased and vice versa. Based on the means of determination which may be unclear or not standardized, it is Invitable in every study and always be potential for concern and therefore should be carefully evaluated. Control of bias is mostly done at the design phase of the study. For control of the selection bias, track choice of study population is important and randomization can control the selection bias. So we focus on the sampling procedure and sample selection. For control of information bias, prep training of interviewers and use of clearly written protocols ensuring uniform methodology of obtaining information. Use of standardized tested instruments for data collection and utilizing uniform source of data on all study subjects. Maintaining of complete records and having definite means of contact with respondents to prevent loss to follow-up. Use of fairly defined means of determination of both exposure and outcome variable. And blinding of interviewers and study participants to study the objectives. In conclusion, need to focus on every step carefully from the research tool development to the participant selection and getting data. The other factor which can affect the results of study is confounding. Confounding is an extraneous factor that is not the factor or relationship under study. 
It is a third factor which is related to both exposure and outcome and which accounts for some or all of the observed relationship between the two. Conditions for a confounder are it is independent risk factor really associated with the outcome. Number two is associated with the study factor that is exposure. And number three is confounder is not part of a study hypothesis that is it is not in the casual pathway. Confounder can lead to an over or underestimation of the true association. In a study conducted to determine the association between smoking and myocardial infarction, age can be a confounder as it is associated with both exposure and outcome independently. Confounding can be controlled before the data collection while designing the study and at the time of analysis. Prior to data collection, it can be controlled by comprehensive literature review. In study design, it can be controlled by restriction matching and randomization. By stratification and multivariate analysis, it can be controlled at the time of analysis. It is preferable to try something at the time of designing the study to avoid the confounding. Number third is effect modifiers. Effect modifiers are variables that bring about a change in the magnitude of an effect. Unlike confounders, effect modifiers does not require to be related to both exposure and outcome variables. It is an intermediate variable. For example, if we want to determine the incidence of stroke among excessive salt users, the outcome will be affected by the hypertension. Similarly, if we want to determine the incidence of coronary heart disease among smokers, the outcome will be affected by the age. In all such cases, age is an effect modifier. Its impact has to be reported through stratification. OR is the abbreviation of odds ratio. And when we do stratification, we use the terms root odd ratio by ORC and strata odd ratio by ORZ. Interpretation of stratification A researcher can see these four types of results after analyzing the data. If the code or ratio is equal to the strata odds ratio, it means that there are no effect modifiers or no confounding in the research. But if code or ratio is not equal to the strata odds ratio, it means that this variable for which we make the stratification it is a confounder. And if the code or ratio is equal to the strata or ratio, but strata or ratio is not equal with the other strata. It means that variable is not a confounder, but there is effect modification. And if code or ratio is not equal to strata or ratio, and strata or ratio are also not equal to other strata or ratio, it means that confounder and effect modifier both are present in the study. Confounders may be of three types, positive confounders, negative confounders, and qualitative confounders. If the code or ratio is more than the adjusted or ratio, this is the example. If the group or ratio is 3.5 and adjusted or ratio is 1.5, then it is a positive confounder. If Good odd ratio is less than the adjusted odd ratio, then it is a negative confounder. And if it reverses in direction, then it is a qualitative confounder. One is in positive direction and the other is in negative direction. 
it means inversion of direction and it is the qualitative confounder. So these are the three types of confounders. So this is about the effect modifiers in the epidemiological study. Subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates and also like the video and share it with your colleagues and friends. All the best.